Hello. Today we're going to be learning the Kutatera Daf Ayin. Uh, we are going to be finishing the Mimer Mimana of Yaakov, and we're going to start the, the Mimer Lehibit Avin Biyakov. So the Mimer Mimana uh, was all about the idea of counting uh, when it comes to Jews. And the idea that, we're, that we are complemented in many places as being uncountable or being so numerous. Um, and and, and we're, the, the Alter Rebbe is trying to understand what exactly that means um, and what the complement is there. And what he has essentially laid out is that there's two uh, perspectives on uncountability. One is that something is so numerous that it that it's difficult to count, like the sand um, in the in the uh, of the ocean, where we say that it's impossible to count, even though it's technically not impossible. Um, and then there's the perspective that the individuality uh, and the distinction between different types is not relevant to me. And so, from that perspective, it's not just that I. Uh, it's not just that I, it's difficult to count, it's that I can't count it. I see it all as one unity. And so these two perspectives are both divine, uh, and they are two perspectives that a Jew has the ability to bring down here. So, the, and, and this, this, this uh, begins to explain why the, the neshama came down in the first place. Because the neshama came from God's thought, right? The rest of creation is God's speech, but the neshama is God's thought. And it would appear as though descending down into the world of speech from a place of thought doesn't seem to uh, doesn't seem to make sense. It seems to be that the neshama would be losing out. But because the neshama is doing mitzvahs, which the mitzvahs are God's will, um, in doing the mitzvahs, the neshama is actually reaching a place that is higher than the uh, than, 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 than he came from in the first place. And when the neshama comes down here and brings God's will down here, he, he accomplishes both of these perspectives. The, the the lower level is that he brings a revelation of um, of Ein Seif into Kesser, which comes down into uh, into the universe, and so he and and in, it brings that infinity into the universe, and the Neshama uh, infuses the universe with a realization and appreciation of that infinity. So unlike the analogy of the sand, where uh, where the, where the individual grains actually could technically be counted, it would just be a very difficult task. There is, in fact, an infinite number of creations. Uh, there's an infinite number of created beings in the worlds of Bria, Yitzhir, and Asiya. But, and, and, the, and the Jew has at the lower level, um, through, through, through performing mitzvahs, the Jew prov- infuses creation with an appreciation of the fact that its infinity is based on its relationship with God. And then there's a higher level where we bring down God's will, the same, the same process of bringing down from, from uh, Ein Saif into Kesar. But, it, but this time, we, it's that we are, we are coming to the perspective of Atsilos. It's not that we're bringing a revelation down into this universe that, um, that conforms to the strictures of the universe, but rather that we appreciate the perspective of Atsilos. And the perspective of Atsilos is that all of creation is truly one. Um, and this is the compliment uh, that that Bilam is paying from this the pasuk that we began the mind with is the pasuk mimana afar afar Yaakov, um, and the the word afar is 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 specific. It's not talking about sand where there are individual grains, but rather dirt where all of the all of earth um, all of dirt is 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 fused together as one and is truly uncountable um, because we don't recognize individual particles of dirt as as individual uh, and finally the reason that it says Yaakov that Yaakov does this is that Yaakov is is the 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 first uh, letter in Yaakov is a uh, Yud which is a reference to uh, to to Chachma and particularly the highest level of Chachma and the other half of Yaakov is Akev which is an ankle which is the lowest part of the body, and Yaakov has this ability to attach from the from the highest to the lowest, and this is precisely what the uh, what the, what the Jew is capable of doing. Um, the process is that we ask for this ability during davening, and then we use that ability at the lower level when we're learning uh, when we're doing mitzvahs, and at the higher level when we learn Torah. And that is the the um, that is the Maimer Mimana. Now the Maimer Lehibe Davin Biyakov. We 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 just begin. And this mimer is all about Yaakov and Yisrael, um, and the and and the, the connecting to the idea of Ben and Eved, of, of serving God as a son or serving God as a, a servant. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what it means to serve God as a servant. What does it mean that God has a service that He wants? Because our perspective on a servant is somebody who 
um, eases the, his master's uh, workload or eases his master's life and makes his master's life better. But God doesn't need anything. And so the, the, and the answer given is that God has a desire for a dwelling place down here. And when we do um, mitzvahs and when we, right, we, 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 are, we are being his servants in that, we are revealing God in a place that does not naturally perceive him. Not that he, that he perceives this world as separate from him, but that we in this world perceive him as, uh, we perceive ourselves, excuse me, as separate. And so the, the, in that way, we act as God's servants. Um, in, in, in cleaning up the world and making this world a home for him, uh, we, are, we, we are, 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 are serving him. Now, the accompaniment to every mitzvah, to every part of the service is uh, prayer, is tefillah, and that we say a blessing before each one. And so the Altar Rebbe does a translation of, of this, of this uh, prayer based on the question that, according to most opinions, prayer is not one of the 613 commandments. And his question is, why? And the answer is that in the in the count of um, of limbs, the the spinal column is uh, is is mismentioned, but the spinal cord is not. And so the um, right and the, the 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 eighteen bones of the spinal column are uh, al- are aligned in in the Talmud and in the Zahar with the eighteen blessings of Shemayin Esrei. And so the the altar the, the, the altar Rebbe hones in on this metaphor and says that. The idea of prayer is all about bringing life to all the mitzvahs, much like the spinal cord has the job of bringing life and bringing vitality to every part of the body. So why is it that the spinal cord is not counted as one of the, as, as one of the, the limbs of our body? Because bringing vitality, being a conduit for vitality, is, 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 is almost too essential. It's so essential that it's not part of the list. It's, it, it's, its whole function is to transmit. And so the, the idea of prayer is something that brings vitality to every, every, one, of the mitzvah, uh, every, every one of the mitzvahs. And it does it through these, the 18, um, the 18 uh, requests that we make in Shemayin Esrei, each one of which is a, a vessel for God's blessing. Um, and, the, and, and so, and so our, 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 ser- our service as a servant is to bring God into the world accompanied by a passion and a drive for that, uh, which, we, which we do through, um, through prayer.